prior to them even saying that I was guilty based on the, the, the questions that the jurors was asking to be read back by the judge, I had already knew that within within a few hours or whatever, you know, I was going to be found guilty. So I remember after they did that, we went out to lunch and I got on the phone with um, my man Tone, who was managing me at that time, who was like my partner. And I called him because he wasn't there. And I was just telling him like, yo, I'm, I'm pretty much sure that I'm going to be found guilty. You know, I had just had my son. He was one years old. And I was just like, just make sure you take care of my son, man. I don't know how much time I'm going to be in here. You know, um, you know, just hold him down. I'm going to be all right, you know. I'm not going to break down or whatever. And he was just like, nah, how do you know this? And I was like, I just know. I just feel it. You know, I was talking to the lawyer. And I remember we was just on the phone. It was like, it was surreal. It was just like, you know, and I, but I had that amount of time just to prepare for a few hours. Just like, you know, and I was, my son was there and I was holding them. And I remember just, you know, just like, I'm not crying. I'm not breaking down here. I'm not going to give these people the satisfaction of just seeing me here crying, you know, going through all of that. So, you know, I remember just saying to myself, all right, it is whatever it's going to be. We just got to figure it out, you know, and we got to deal with it. You know, I don't know how we got here, but this is it, you know. And um, I remember after they, they said I was guilty and the DA just looked at me like he was looking for me to show some, you know, he wanted to seem like he broke me, you know, and I just looked at him. And just, you know, and just took the time, you know, just took the um the guilty plea. They wouldn't allow me to bail out. They wouldn't allow me to go home with my family for days or prepare anything. So they just immediately remanded me into custody. And then it, it would be seven years before I would see the streets again. <clears throat> Damn, it's a, it's a hard story to hear. But the reality is coming from our circumstances, it's just all too familiar. So I'm listening to you, and whereas my heart breaks for you, I mean, we deal with this every yeah. day of the week. Mm -hmm. This is our reality as young African-American males. So you get sent seven to 14 years. This is 1998 or 99? 99. This is 99. So you don't hit the streets again till about 06. Yeah. Who are you inside? And the reason I ask you this is for a very specific reason, right? You're my son. Mm -hmm. Got a record deal. You know Puff, Lighty. You did records with some of the biggest of the big. You're going to be tested. You could go in there and easily, yo, I got to make a name for myself. Like, like they got to know that I'm thorough. Did you take that road and wild out? Or did you immediately come to an understanding that I just got played by the system and now I got to educate myself if I'm ever going to be a benefit to any of the other young brothers and young sisters that find themselves in the same situation. So I, I went there, you know, and I say this all the time, man. The fact that I went to prison at the age of 21 pretty much saved my life. And the fact that I was had a record deal pretty much saved my life. The fact that I had so many things to live for and so many people, I had a one-year-old son, like I had experienced a level of life that Three or four years prior to that, had I went to prison, I would went there with the exact mentality that you had. I got to make a name for myself. I'm not going to let you do nothing to me. Whatever I got to do, whoever I got to cut, whoever I got to fight, whatever I got to do, that, that would have been my mentality. But coming from the streets, just from being in the Super Bowl and just from being at dinner with Puff and Chris Lighty and just from being you know, supposed to, the day before, the day after I got locked up, I was supposed to do the Vibrant Thing remix. But I never made it because I got locked up that day and I was supposed to go to, Chris had called me like, yo, tomorrow you gotta go do the Vibrant Thing remix. And you know, just knowing that and the Violator album was just about to drop and I was just, heard my song on the Rough Riders. I was just on the, the float at the Puerto Rican Day Parade with Big Pun. Like just, just understanding those realities for me 
when I got in prison, saying to myself, like, it's way much more for me to lose in here. Like, I'm not going to adapt to my surroundings. I'm going to have to make my surroundings adapt to me. You know, I'm not going to be no punk. I'm not letting y'all do anything to me ever. But I'm not getting involved with prison politics. I'm not getting involved in who's the toughest person. You know, I'm going to establish myself as a man, you know, but I have way too much to, to lose. And every day that I allow this system to beat me, you know, every day I don't learn something, I don't grow mentally, physically, emotionally, the system wins, you know? And that was my mindset. I'm not going to let the system beat me. And I had a lot of, when I, from the first day I got in there, you know, some people knew who I was, but I had a lot of elders, you know, a lot of OGs that, you know, cause I was always somebody who paid attention and listen, you know, I didn't talk much, you know, when I talked, I had something to say. I didn't just want to be loud or heard or seen. So a lot of the elders would take me under their wings. The OGs was coming and be like, yo, young blood, and, and just schooling me and just telling me like, yo, don't fall into the pitfalls here. Don't get involved with these gangs and don't get involved with the drugs and the gambling. You know, you mind your business, you do what you're supposed to do. If you got to handle something, you feel like you got to get it on with somebody, you, you handle that, but do not, don't fall into prison. Cause you're not, you, this is not for you. You know, this is not what you're trying to make your life. You know, you got a lot going for you, man. And you and you got it, you going home. It ain't you ain't you're not here forever. So you don't have to make this place comfortable for you. You don't have to make this place your home. You know, and and that stuck with me, you know. And I had people who was I had family members visiting me every day. So I never I never got comfortable in prison. I never like you, I gotta make this my home. I always made myself uncomfortable so I knew I couldn't stay here, you know. So I did what I had to do. I, I worked out, you know, I wrote rhymes, I read, I educated myself, you know, and I just, and I, and I surrounded myself by people who had like minds, who had the same morals that I have. We wasn't with no gang, but it was just a few of us, you know, and we were strong and we were respected, you know, because we, the way we carried ourselves. And if we had to, if it was a situation occur, we you might have to have a fight here and there. If that happens, you shake your hand, you go back. You know, and and we and we handled it that way. But for the most part, you know, I don't I don't think most people tested me because I never gave off an energy for you for me to feel like you had to test me. Except you know, there's a corny here person who just jealous because they hear your name and they want to try to get some rep off of you. But even those, for the most part, you know, we 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 ended them civilly. And if if we didn't, we we ended it with some level of respect at the end of the day. You know, so I just always carry myself in a manner that which I would give you respect, but I demanded the same respect. You know, there's so much happening in the world. And I hear you say again and again, how you can end conflict civilly. You're tested in gladiator school. You're locked up. Your measurement of a man on the inside is, 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 is brawn, it's, it's, it's how thorough you are physically. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily this. Why it actually you, is. You're still a young man. But it actually is mentally. You know, you think it's physically because that's what you believe. You believe that every, until you start to realize that it's, it's mind over matter, you believe that every conflict has to be ended physically or has to be addressed physically. You know what I'm saying? I think what people understand Nobody really wants to conflict with somebody who's equally <clears throat> as willing to go where they want to go. That it just doesn't do. If 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 me and you know that we one of us gonna end up dying here, you know, it's just like U.S. and the Russia in Russia, right? The reason why they don't go to war is because they like we both got atomic missiles and we both could blow this whole shit up. Now we got this kind of doesn't make sense. Is is what this situation that we about to beef over even worth that? You know what I'm saying? And I think, and that's how most situations happen in prison. You know, when you real young and you're not, and you're not aware, you find them getting into beefs all the time. But when, when, it, when you start getting older and you see the, the older thorough dudes, they meet, they have a conversation in the middle, like, okay, so how do we end this without it turning into this? Cause we both know we willing to go to that. That's, that's beyond. We put enough work in, you know where I'm willing to go. I know where you willing to go. So how do we end this so it don't have to go there? And if not, then cool. 
But the first thing we're going to do is figure out how do we end this before we have to tear this whole jail up. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.